get that thing. All right, let's do it old school way. The life of a Mac admin, we struggle, but why? Like nomads in an ever-changing environment, we wander lost to find greener pastures. We will never know comfort. We will, and for those who try it alone, I guarantee you, they will fail. And I know this because I have tried to go alone. So welcome to banging your head, crying under your desk. You're not alone. And this is a way more urgent sounding name than which, what it originally which was, lever leveraging resources. You're not alone, which sounds like a horror movie, and it actually is. <laughs> so, so who am I? I'm Andrew Clayton. I work for Washington Community College in Ann Arbor, Michigan. My official title is Mac System Engineer, User Support. But nobody calls me any of that. I'm just known as the Mac guy. And that's because I'm I am the entire Mac team party of one. So when I started down this path over 20 years ago, being the Mac guy was not complicated. We only had a graphic design lab. We just had a few Macs. And here's me back in the 90s setting one of them up. We weren't tied to the internet. We just, we just had one, one computer set up. I'd copy it to a disk. I'd drag it to the others. Outside of dealing with SCSI, uh, things were pretty easy. And then things started to grow. Photography department went digital. We added labs, scanners, inkjet printers. Then video production came on. Two more labs, more software. My levels grew, and my level of skills grew, and the max grew. Uh, most of this was a kind of exciting challenge as new stuff comes on. I really enjoy troubleshooting. And back then, resources were scarce, but we did finally get the internet. And I could jump on Alta Vista, and I could search for information. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't much out there at the time, but I didn't need much. And then somewhere along the lines, we moved the Mac Classic to Mac OS X. I took a couple of Unix classes, I forged ahead. Then we started an animation department. More labs, crazier software. Music labs, two more with huge software. Our broadcasting and radios, people started having them. So now we needed X servers. Uh, we started, I, we, I, I started net booting, imaging with net restore, later deploy studio. Uh, numbers of faculty started to grow with Max. And guess who had to take care of all this? Still just me. Active directory binding, tracking printers. Then we started online distance classes, and this required video content. So now everybody wanted Final Cut Pro, and all this work needed to be stored somewhere, so now I'm adding Apple Raids. And all the storage needs to be backed up, still me. Then came these iPads. And then people wanted to run Windows on Macs with Boot Camp. The campus really at this point went Mac crazy. And all this was still on my plate. More and more of my time was being pulled into these other projects that I had little expertise on. Things started to get slappy, and there was no way I can continue being this Mac admin unless I got some help with it. This party was over for the Mac admin party of one, and more and more I was fighting, I was finding myself banging my head and crying under my desk. Okay, let's take a poll here. Uh, how many people in education? Whoa, that's a lot. All right, do, do, you, do most of you deal with Macs and PCs? You have to know both platforms? A few? Who's just Mac? Okay, interesting. So anybody do everything? Damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. So I, I, I bow to you all, especially people who have to deal with two platforms. All right. Okay, so for me, what I had to do was I had to find experts. I had to find people who could do things that I couldn't do. Otherwise, I was keep things were being added to my plate. So, in fact, that actually was um, probably a better name for this whole thing. Um, find your experts. You're not alone. Damn, too late now. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's easy to get isolated from the rest of the IT department. The Mac platform is considered completely alien to most of my coworkers. Think different meant everything was different. Heck, I even bought into it. I snickered every time the Windows people discuss packages. I still think MSI stands for more stupid initials. But once again, I, <laughs> once again, I forged to look outside of my Mac bubble and start to look for similarities. We had a lot of things in common. Software, we ran on the same network. We dealt with the same bandwidth issues. Even though, our, even though our tools were different from the window world, the process and end goal was pretty much the same. I think 
maybe we're not so different after all. Maybe these people could help me. But how do I figure out who did what? Now, how did I learn? Various tried and true ways. I did stuff wrong. So, uh, once I got myself a server, I treated it kind of how like I was treating myself. I was putting as many processes as I can on it. I was running file shares for faculties and classes, net booting off of it, deploy studio on it, update <laughs> server on it. Hey, let's use that profile manager. Heck, I even had multiple lights, uh, licensing servers on it. It was a security nightmare. Another thing that, ha oh, uh, yeah, this was actually from one of my people. He said, uh, I got this email. Do you have a Mac SAN? It's one of our head system admins on campus. He, he, he didn't even know what I had. So that was, uh, that was very eye-opening. I didn't know I had an error. Uh, OK, so other things that we did. My entire team got reorganized because we did something wrong. And that wasn't just me. Us network crashers actually got reassigned to our network department for a while. And that was a really good way to make us talk to them. Uh, somebody else did something wrong. A printer was replaced. That shouldn't be an issue. But I only learned that printer was replaced when all the Mac users could no longer print to it. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, so, so, so maybe that's not the best path, the best path to, to, to learn what people do. So, so here's how I recommend you get out of the Mac bubble. Uh, ask questions and show interest in what others do. Once you're familiar with what other people do, it's easy to find their expertise. And if they don't have the answer, there's still a resource to direct you to who they might know. Uh, share your expertise with them. The more I learned about my coworkers, the more I could share with what I was, what I was doing and how it related to them. So once I did this, my, my job was no longer strange and foreign, and they were willing to like dip their toes into the Mac world. Uh, get invited to the party. Uh, eventually, asking questions does circle round. The more, I, the more I reach out and ask, the more people start to ask for my expertise. And um, I, I start being taken into account when, uh, when decisions are being made. They put a firewall in. They actually came to me and said, hey, you want to come to these meetings? When we got a new print system, they start going, we're moving to a new print system. Let's see how it works with the Macs. Unfortunately, this, this does mean that I get invited to a lot more meetings. So, I'm going to talk about workflows here. I actually have a little thing to tell me to drink there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, see the drink too. It feels later in the day. Uh, okay, poll here. Redundancy. Is it good or is it evil? We hear a lot about redundancy in tech, obviously, and redundancy in, in data is a really good thing. Also, two heads working on the same issue and sharing the same information. Also good, because you never know when one of them might lose a head. <laughs> Redundancy is not so good when you have two heads working separately to build identical systems. <laughs> What's the point? It's not efficient. What I'm struggling to when I'm struggling to maintain Project X on, the on X on the Mac side, and then there's somebody else pretty much doing the same thing on the Windows side. So this I needed to stop. So I started looking at these different places. And these are things I found. Storage. Who takes care of the storage for the non-Mac users? Uh, it turns out the guy that sent me this email was, was a system admin who was in charge of storage and backups. He offered me a solution at the time called uh, Netatalk, which allowed us to run AFP over um, on a virtual Linux server. I helped him with the user testing on this. The large storage was off my plate. All these volumes were later moved to a, a Windows share. All right, next one. Our help desk. <laughs> um, for me, classrooms and labs are supposed to take priority, but I get easily sidetracked into helping faculty with little things, those little sad, desperate phone calls. I mean, how do you say no to that? <laughs> uh, and it feels really good being everyone's little personal hero. But, but taking on these tier one issues only put off my bigger, bigger projects, and it turned into a really, really good procrastination mode. You sit there, you need help? I'll be right there. So, uh, so I started thinking, well, we have this help desk. They're there to help the users with tier one issues. So why, aren't, so why are all these Mac users calling me? 
And one of the biggest reasons was the help desk had no clue how to handle Macs. They were only getting training on PCs. Our training people didn't know anything about Macs. And any time the help desk heard the word Mac, they would just automatically send it to me. Everything. So I was just thinking, if only there was a Mac guy on campus who could train these people <laughs> and knows these things. So I started with just giving them, giving them some documentation on the top four issues we, ha we faced. I wanted to keep it really simple so that they weren't mundated with, here's 100 things you have to look through. They can just go, it's going to be one of these four things. And if it's not one of these four things, you can pass it off. So when security forces us to change our passwords on campus, I put up signs at the help desk reminding them about how to, how to, how to update keychains. Uh, the help desk can solve, can't solve every Mac problem, but they solve like eight out of 10 now. And that's doing really good, and that simplifies things for me a lot. Also, my listed phone number on the website you saw earlier, if you call that, that's the help desk. <laughs> <laughs> OK, the network department. As my labs grew, uh, Let's see, yeah, as my labs grew, I was pushing about 50 gigs to around, of software to around 300 machines. And, uh, and if I had the entire network to myself, it still would be time consuming. So I had some options. I could work around, I could work around others by imaging after hours on weekends and hope that nobody else has the same idea. And you'd be shocked how we would all run into each other in the halls at three in the morning and go, oh, hi, not good. Or I could bring my problem to network services. I gave them the information. I gave them as much information as possible. And I made a huge effort to use their language. Uh, so I would say, when I say netboot, I would say, it's pixie booting. And <laughs> so, so luckily, once they understood it, imaging on this scale wasn't new to them, even though it was new to me. So I relied on their expertise to decide what the best solution was for this. And my network services just gave me my own VLAN, and I never had issues again. So, okay, what do we got next here? Yeah, computer management tools. <laughs> so, when I was moving from, uh, from imaging computers over to a management system, I decided to look at the tools that were already in our shop. Um, this is similar to the Windows shares instead of, interested, you know, instead of putting them there, instead of setting up another server. So on our Windows side, we were using Microsoft's SCCM and Case by Dell. Anybody using those for Mac? And you're multi-shop people, right? There you go. So, because both of these claim to work for Mac, Mac 2. But after some research, I asked my Windows comrades to walk me through these things. And no surprise here, neither of them was a great choice for managing the Macs for me. So I went with Monkey. Um, if you were here in 2011 and you saw me walking around like looking like a deer in the headlights, so that was me trying to learn monkey. Um, but I did end up using the inventory system in case. I mean, why not? It was already there. I was already using the ticket system. And when I set up monkey, I chose not to do monkey report because it pretty much has the same th um, functionality as our case agent does. So that's one less thing for me to set up. And there's... And yes, it's one less thing to set up. So there doesn't have to be one solution for everything. You can have multiple things and work with what you have. It, if you're in a mixed shop, absolutely, you kind of just want to use one tool. It may not be the best tool, but if you know it, you're better off than having to run multiple tools. Okay, so, so all right. Yeah, so just use what works for you. So other things like this, licensing servers. Our animation department use Maya by Autodesk, which requires a license server. <coughs> I've dealt with these before. Uh, do we have other departments that use Autodesk software? It turns out our automotive department did, and they already had a license server set up. So I talked to the person supporting that department, and bam, my lab was on that licensing server too. So yeah, I could have just s slapped all that on the server, and they could have run their license server, I could have run mine. But that's redundancy, and redundancy can be evil. Now, if I already had a license server set up and they were just about to do it, then I could say, hey, why don't you use my license ser server, which I'm sure they would look at piled on top of a lot of other things and go, now we'll do our own. And then in that case, I'd say, take mine too, please. <laughs> so, so, so with that and all of these, redundancy can be good. 
Um, all these things now have a second set of eyes on them. I'm not the only person who deals with my storage. When there's a problem with storage, a user will call me because it's a Mac problem, and I will redirect to the people who are in charge of the storage, but I can test anything, and I can know if there's any problems before I even hand it back to that person, so I'm not just going, deal with this Mac user, because they may have a network problem. We don't know what their problem is with that storage. So, okay. Okay. Utilizing resources that were available in my, or in my organization took a bit of strain off my workload, but they're not going to solve all my problems. When it comes to Mac, Mac problems, I'm still just a Mac team party of one, and I'm going to need expertise and help from other ag Mac admins. And that's where I look outside of my organization. So when I started this job, there wasn't many resources available. There was a few white papers from Apple, mostly on Xers and NetBooting, and there was README files that came with software installed this. Uh, as for third party, Mike Bombach, uh, who's known now for mostly for carbon copy, closer, uh, carbon copy cloner, he had the best tools at the time. He had this one, NetRestore. Um, he had great tools and scripts. Um, unlike today, we didn't need much back there. But lucky for us, as things grow, the Mac admin, grows, Mac admin world grows, and so does our resources. Um, so the most important thing is get online, research, research, research. In fact, most of my job is researching. You know, when people ask me what do I do for a living, I say I mostly Google stuff. <laughs> so, um, okay, so word of caution. Make sure you don't skip the research phase and just go to the ask phase. Um, there are stupid questions. Oh, sorry, there are no stupid questions, but there are lazy questions. And if you're asking stuff without researching first, you're not going to get good responses from people. Uh, all right, so here's how you research. What's how I research, I should say. Um, wiki, documentations, wiki documentation from, uh, from the software companies. Hey, look at that. We shouldn't be doing this late at night. Uh, <laughs> software, whether it be paid or uh, open source, is going to have user instructions. Um, they're usually in the form of a wiki. So when learning, always go there first. And if what you're trying to do isn't on that wiki, um, maybe you're trying to do something the software wasn't intended to do. <laughs> OK. So Google searching. There's more to Google searching than you think. And if you don't believe me, uh, Abby Weinberg did a full talk on it yesterday morning. So if you miss it, I suggest you go watch that. You could watch her YouTube video on it. It's really good at how what uh, phrases, looking for dates on things, and all those kind of things. Um, other places to search is the Slack admins channel. Now I put it here because Slack doesn't show up in a Google search, so it is kind of a separate thing. Uh, again, I'm talking here about searching for information and not asking. Ninety percent of the time, I when I'm on Slack. I'm just searching, and I rarely need to ask. It's usually already been asked by the time it comes around, by the time I get around to doing it. <laughs> so some search, some search trips, tips, and trusted resources. So many presenters have personal blogs here, and uh, as you search, you'll start seeing the same ones coming up over and over again, and they're really good places to look. Um, I never just go and read their blogs because some of the stuff is over my head. And, but when I search them, I can go, ah, that's it right there. So there's all kinds of range there. Um, so yeah, and I, I got to say, between Slack, and the, between Slack and the blogs, I really don't know how these guys get any work done. <laughs> so, OK, most software companies have forums. It doesn't mean the vendors always look at them, but the community itself can be really helpful on them. And for, for, for instance, like I don't use Jamf but their forum pages pop up a lot in my searches. Uh, most management systems pretty much work the same, so the information can be easily applied to my tools, since I use Monkey, most a lot of the things, hey, how do we get this thing to turn into a package and that? That's gonna work for any kind of management system. Okay, uh, well, I'm constantly writing little pre and post scripts uh, for, for, for packages. I'm not a huge scripter, but I'm good enough to steal stuff from other people, and I'm good enough to like figure out what I need to do and reverse engineer other ones. So, and I find StackExchange.com, StackOverflow.com are sites that 
that tend to pop up all the time when I'm searching. So, um, I like kind of talking past my notes. Uh, <laughs> the, the, the crazy part is usually there ends up being 10 different ways to do things. And someone asks and they go, it's like this. And then, no, you can do it like this, and you can do it like this, and you can do it like this, and you just pick what's best for you. Okay, GitHub is the mother load when it comes to scripts, custom profiles, tools. Just, it's really good. Uh, once again, these are usually shared by a fair amount of the, the, the good folks who are lurking around the halls here. Okay, all right, so outside the browser, here are some resource, resources that don't require a browser. My favorite is the Slack admin channel. You can do it through a website. I actually use the Slack app, um, but there are loads of people willing to help you, so don't be scared to ask. Just once again, do your research first. Questions, questions that regularly repeat don't get the attention like fresh ones, too. If you, ask, if you ask first and someone sends you a link to an earlier conversation, guess what? You're doing it wrong. <laughs> also, if they put a, uh, the wiki page, which I love, did you read this wiki page? Did you read this wiki page? Or sometimes it's just blick, 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 blick. And you know, these things can clog up the feed. So be polite. Search first. Okay, the Mac Enterprise email list. Um, it's slowed down a bit since uh, Slack, but it's, there's still some great information there. It's also archived online, so it does appear in the Google searches. Um, also, not everybody's on Slack. So, uh, Okay, I stole this one from, from Abby's Google search presentation, but if you have time to listen to the Mac Admins podcast, they have really good information and they have really good interviews on there. So it's definitely something to, to uh, think. Okay, what do we got next? Okay, conferences. Hey, I think you got this one figured it out. <laughs> figured out really good. But you YouTube people, conferences, show up. Uh, conferences like this one are a great outside resource. And you being here today means that you know that. Don't forget the YouTube videos and online slides. They're a great resource. My first Mac Admins conference was in 2014. Uh, building and deploying images worked just fine in the past, but things like flash updating once a month mean, mean that I needed a better solution for it. So I poured over these videos, and Grazi had just pulled me back out from under my desk. Uh, even after all that, big changes still happen, and we're all here again trying to figure it out. Okay, uh, Apple doesn't stand still, so we just got to keep adapting to it. Okay, second part here, drink. This is kind of the key, th this, is, this, is, uh, this, this is what I was kind of, this, oh, never mind, hold on. Read the slides, baby. Uh, <laughs> it's my first time doing this. Uh, okay, so that was a rundown of resources. Unfortunately, getting, to, uh, getting knowledge of uh, others uh, internally or, on, or online isn't easy. It requires good communication skills and building relationships. So for this, we can look back to 10th century ancient culture in Mexico called the Toltec. They were responsible for little things like this, but they also had a philosophy called the Four Agreements. The Four Agreements can be applied to any situation in life, so let's apply them to IT. Okay, number one, be impeccable with your word. Speak with integrity and say only what you mean. Asking for help can be hard. The fear of feeling stupid can be really overpowering. It's important to be honest. Pretending that I understand something isn't going to get me any closer to understanding it. Only by admitting I don't understand something, I'm actually going to learn that. Okay. Tearing people down to elevate me still leaves me in the same place. Passing the blame builds bad relationships with, with the people you're blaming. If it is your fault, apologize and fix it. If it's not your fault, don't think for a moment that the person whose fault it was doesn't feel bad about it. Uh, defensive mode is usually the first reaction after making a mistake. Pile that onto a person's guilt, and that is not going to help anything. Don't make assumptions. Ask questions and express exactly what you really want to know. Communicate with others as clearly and as possible to avoid, to avoid any misunderstandings. Start at the beginning and draw a picture of what you want the end goal to be. Don't assume you know that you should know anything that happens in between. 
You work with the people to draw the line between the beginning and the end point. Treat those people like the experts they are. This is, this is power in handling, man, I rewrote some of this last night. Uh, this is power in handing your colleagues the problem. There is power in handing the colleagues the problem and getting to work with you on a solution. This makes them feel needed and not used. So when asking for help from internal colleagues, research, of course, as much as you can before you approach them. Then show them the research, send them resource links, and if there's any security requirements, give them those too. So for instance, uh, when I set up a Reposado server, this is what I gave my people. I gave them the problem, I agreed the solution that we discussed, I gave them resources, and I gave them the requirements for it. And between those things, they should be able to get done what needs to be done. And if there's any questions about it, I've laid it all out as long as they read it. Did they read it? Maybe. No, it, it, it was outward facing. It was only 250 gigs. I needed 400 gigs. But we went back and said, hey, look at this. And uh, it did work. OK. Uh, when you're asking for help, too, show that you've already tried. Um, show that you tried everything. And don't, and, 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 and don't have. And don't make people repeat your steps. Like in shell scripting, if I send somebody a script and they look at it and say, oh man, you're missing a quote. Thank you, as opposed to, I can't script this, can you script it for me? OK, learning their language. Um, this is where being familiar with other people's jobs comes in again. Like saying, pixie boot instead of net boot, and things like that. There's a lot of acronyms in the tech world. Uh, my colleagues may know 2,322 of them, and, uh, but that doesn't mean they know all the 22 MAC acronyms. <laughs> so, okay, remember to get outside of your head. Not everybody, know, not everybody knows what you know. Don't forget to communicate practical information, like the timeline of your request. If you ask for help but don't say when you need it, next thing you know, you'll come back to these people and they'll be on vacation. You're not finishing on time. So, um, all right, uh, don't take anything personally. Nothing, nothing others do to you is because of you. Uh, but, when you but, but when you are immune to the options, to the opinions and actions of others, you won't be the victim of needless suffering. That's kind of right off of the, the book thing. I, I don't speak that way. Uh, <laughs> but when your way is questioned, um, or not reinforced by others, it's easy to feel like a victim and like you're being attacked. In electronic age, in email and on Slack, it's hard to read other people's emotions. It's easy, it's easy to read a short message as being rude. Take a step back, try not to overreact, and pay attention to what they're actually saying, what the information is in there. Uh, the term best practices comes up often in conversation, especially on Slack, and there's usually a suggested route that gets the best results. Um, I've tried to take shortcuts when time was tight, but I've always regretted it. The shortcuts are, are never as reliable as the suggested routes. Sometimes they make work for a patch, but you're gonna have to go back, redo the work anyway. So for instance, when I'm on Slack, I've seen, I've seen people ask for guidance when they're trying to take uncharted shortcuts. They're usually met with warnings about best practices. Af after several Mac admins, try to talk the person out of doing it their way, the person, the person gets more frustrated, feels ganged up on, and will gradually leave the channel. Ah, found the space on the slide. Uh, don't let this happen to you because you'll lose a really important resource of, of, of knowledge that's out there. Okay, this one's great. Always do your best. Um, the best is gonna change from moment to moment. Time and resources can impact that really heavily. Um, under, under any circumstances, simply do the best with what you have, and you'll avoid self-judgment and regret. Uh, also, don't try to do everything perfectly. It can paralyze you. Just do the best for you, to do the best for at that moment, and revisit it when you have the time. I don't know how many times I will fight trying to get a preference to work, only to realize I spent a half a day, and I have so much more work to do. That can wait until after my classes start, and people go, hey, this thing's popping up. I'm like, I'm getting to it. And then the next week, I can implement it, and it will be fine. But I will get behind just messing with these little things. So, that's, so, that's, so, so when you say do your best,
pay attention to what your best should be. Okay, so uh, sometimes these four agreements are not enough, and you deal with people who just don't work so well with you. Uh, here's a couple of things. Uh, I make sure to follow proper channels. I, uh, going directly to the expert in question, it doesn't always work. My problem is obviously a priority to me, but it might not be to them. Months can go by, and I'm just sitting on my hands. Uh, what started with me asking for a favor has turned into me badgering them. So what went wrong? It's on me. I went through the wrong channel of chain of command. I, if I submitted my problem to the overall group or to the supervisor of that area with a set deadline when I need it by, the project would have been assigned to the person by that boss. And they, and they would now be answering to their boss, not answering to me trying to give me a favor. Uh, okay. I make sure I leave a paper trail. Email is your, fest, is your best friend, and you should embrace it. When meeting with people, make sure to take copious notes. Then summarize the meeting in, a me in an email with assigned action items called out. Be sure to ask the question, is this what you understood? If necessary, keep sending emails until you get a response. That's really key. You can talk in a meeting and come out of it and get two totally different ideas of what it is. So, okay. Um, all right, moving on. Another resource is, okay, uh, this, well, what is this? Oh, I missed part of my slide here. Okay. Um, another resource is you, and it's a very, very important one. So document everything you do. Uh, despite, makes you, despite the mistakes you've made, uh, and actually because of those mistakes, you are one of your best resources. So seriously, write everything down. There's been many admin presentations on documentation, so I'm not going to go into details on this, but you should. No, wait. You need to document. One, do it for you, for your own sanity. I know it seems like a lot of extra work, but if you're going to have to do that task again, your documentation will save you so much time. Many things I do, is I do them only once a year. Um, after I spent three hours working out how to install that crazy app plugin and to make it that wasn't a package, um, document it will take less time off when I have to figure it out when the version 2.0 comes out next year. So do it for others. You may not be there forever. Uh, share it with the online community. I, f I find that most things I want to do have already been done by other people and shared online. Um, that obviously helps me out tremendously, so why not pay it back? If you can find a solution online, if you can't find a solution online and you developed a solution, well, share it. You may also, you may also be blogging your experience and methods and presenting here next year. So, okay, what do we got next? Uh, okay, pay attention when others, <laughs> pay attention, uh, pay attention when others help you with a project. Bam, that's good. Okay, uh, document, what they do, document what they do and ask them to contribute to the documentation. Uh, this will help you and anyone who takes over the project especially since the project you helped you may not be around forever. I actually went around and said, who knows, certificate, who, who, who knows how to do certs, uh, certificates? And they said, this guy does. And he got me, and he went on Let's Encrypt, and he got me a, a, a thing on the server, and then he went, there you go. And I was like, thank you. And he left, and I went through the terminal things trying to figure out what he did, and in the end, my documentation just says, Martino did some magic. And uh, unfortunately, he was very good, and he left. So, um, that's that. So now I have some more research to do to figure out what he did. He could have just told me. He could have just wrote it down, but I, I didn't get that. Okay, keep a daily log. I really like to do this. Um, it'll help when issues reoccur, and it, helps, and it helps let me know when to pick up the next day. What I didn't get done at the end of the day, uh, of the end of one day, goes on to the next day. It's kind of like, I a lot of times used to find myself Friday night just overwhelmed. And then I come in Monday morning and be like, hey, everybody. And it was a complete reset. And it's really wrong. So once I, once I knew where I was, I would go back, read the last day, and it was kind of like, uh, like a previously at my job. 
it's like that. And then, and then, the, and then the stuff I, I needed to get done that's pending, instead of trying to remember it, I just put it on for the next day. And that to me is, you know, uh, uh, this week on blah, blah, blah. So it kind of does that to you. Okay. Okay. Um, what do we got? Oh, yeah. Remember your users. That's another section. Uh, I spent a lot of time here talking about asking for help from others. Uh, let's flip this and let's talk about the expert I am to other people, because these people are the people I'm paid to support. My users aren't stupid. They have degrees in the fields they work in, and that's way more than I can say about myself. But I definitely would never call them tech savvy. Let's just say they have different areas of expertise. <laughs> so, and if they could solve their own IT problems, I wouldn't be needed. So when I ask them to open the network pane and the system preferences, that probably sounds as hard to them as configuring a masterless salt instance does to me. And that's the talk that's across the hall. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, okay. so, um, okay. So first thing, don't talk down to them. If you do, they're going to stop seeking help from you. The key word is here, your help. Once they stop asking for your help, they may turn to their teenage offspring that knows everything about computers. I've seen this. Next thing you know, they're in recovery mode, they're changing the admin passwords, and they're creating total havoc. So, uh, and you're gonna love this one. Always say yes to helping them solve their problems. <laughs> I receive faculty requests all the time for special software and for special hardware that they think is gonna solve a problem. I always try to redirect the conversation away from what they think the solution is to what, I'm try to, to what they're actually trying to achieve. Uh, I work around their assumptions, I ask questions, I get the information that I really need. Then I decide what the best solution is. Most of the time we already have something in-house that we, that's, that that's a solution, just the way the networking people know what's gonna happen. And they go, I need blah, 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 and you go, ah, ah, ah. We, we, we have something. Here you go. This will help you. So, well, I just talked ahead. Oh, no. Uh, okay. Try not to turn that, so try to turn that no to their way of doing things into a yes to solving what their problem actually is. You have to sell your expertise, and with that, you, you can teach them how to always ask. Example, um, I get people saying, uh, I need a creative cloud. And we go, well, what are you doing? I need Photoshop. Uh, what are you doing? I need to convert a PNG to a JPEG. It's like, oh, um, you can just use Preview. <laughs> Wait, what? So, and it's so much easier to learn. Okay, selling IT changes instead of demanding them. Uh, selling IT changes instead of demanding them. Selling is always needed when implementing new stuff like copiers or requiring password changes or even setting up a, 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 a a self-served uh, uh, system. See, that wasn't on there. Uh, we, we tend to drop these things on users with no warnings. To them, it's just one more thing to learn, one more thing to do. So what's the benefit to them? To them, to Try to get them on board. Try to sell them on the changes instead of flatly demanding that they use them. Tell them why, what, tell them why we're doing it and exactly what it solves. I like to use terms like, for your safety and to better serve you. You hear these things all the time at pharmacies and things like that, and a lot of times it's just a way to stop you from doing something, but, but it works really well. Um, for instance, like um, um, I have users who sometimes just don't run their updates, and I approach them and say, hey, what's, what's the problem? And they say, um, it, it, you know, they say, I just never think about it. It's just not. It's just not on my radar. I have other things to do. So I explain the importance of it, and then I offer them solutions. Like I set up a calendar reminder that, that goes off at the end of their office hours. It's just a simple little thing like that. And, that's a, that's a, it's, and, and if they hit it once a week, they're about to leave and go, blink, all right. If they hit their updates, they leave. And you just find what's the best time for them to do that. It works really well. OK, once again, don't take things personally. <laughs> When users have emergencies, they can get pretty mad and they can be really flustered and, and, and freaked out. Um, they sometimes lash out at me because I'm the first person they see. But I know it's not about me. 
And if, and if I'm going to emotionally focus on that and not the problem at hand, it's not going to go well. So like a nurse in an ER, you have to be calm, you have to reassure them, and you got to do your best to help them. And maybe you can't solve it, but at least you're trying, and that's, that's really nice to, you know, that, that's just what they want to hear. They just need help, because what their job is, is not dinking around with, with, with an IT problem. Okay. Um, all right. So, last note. Uh, last is a note of thanks to early adapters and beta testers in the Mac admin community. I very much appreciate these pioneers who lead the way through our ever-changing landscape onto greener pastures. For, for us who play it safe, because holding out for that 0.2 minimum on the next OS update means our users aren't going to have to battle those early version bugs. Um, I'm well aware that if, 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 if I took down a server that my, my, my users are depending on, I know exactly what I'd be doing. This. So that's what I got. Um, open to questions. Um, a, a, a lot of my examples of things I was talking about are very old. Deploy Studio, NetBooting, things like that. Um, I'm using these because these were the things that guided me up to where I am now which is in very, very good communication with my people. And um, it, it's, it's been really helpful. So, oh, yeah, where's the, uh, the box? I, I, you know, I signed up to speak just to throw the box. <laughs> is it on? Check. Yes. <laughs> yes. Still works. I signed up to speak just to break the speaker box. Test, test. Uh, I don't even have a question. I just wanted to catch the speaker box. No, um, uh, with your experience of being kind of the only one, uh, I, I imagine, uh, with a ton of workload, and, and I was wondering how you managed to uh, kind of taper or, or balance expectations from, from the office or the school you were working at, and how you kind of properly set those expectations for when you can get tasks done being the only, only person. Um, well, it, it, there's no choice. It's, it's sink or swim. I mean, the problem is I would always go ask for help to my boss, she doesn't watch this. Um, and she'd give me grunt help. Oh, you need help unboxing computers. I can unbox a lab in two minutes. That's not the kind of thing I need help with. It's, it's the bigger projects that are confusing. So, so really, what, what it was was picking the right times. Like summer now, I'm busy crazy. But as soon as September hits, we're going to slow down. So we kind of take projects, and I go, hey, I want to do this. Like, I want to virtualize this server. I want to get this off of this, this thing. When's good for you? It may not be for three months, but we, we, we kind of plan for it, we get ready for it, and then we go for it. So those are kind of like long-term long year goals as opposed to just weekly goals. Does that, does that answer? Yeah, I think so. I think, I think that's um, it's really enlightening not to want to take on something right as you think of it because you're like, oh, this is really exciting. This is something I would really love to do, and I, I think that's good to hear to kind of manage that and, and look at the big picture as opposed to just doing it as soon as you can. Yeah, well, I, I, I love the challenges. In fact, when I first worked and I, I was doing it for a while, I actually got bored and I was going to leave. And then they said, oh, we're going we're gonna to start up a music department. I'm like, awesome. So, you know, so I went and I took the Pro Tools classes to learn the software because they were going, oh, we need this plugin and that. And it's like, I don't know any of this. And I ran back and forth. So I took the class. Mm -hmm. I learned the program. And then I came back. And when they say we need a plugin to work for this, I can actually know how to test this stuff. I don't have to say, can you test this? Can you test this? And, and it was kind of fun doing that because I, I like all the new things. But, yeah, they can really build up fast. Honestly, it was those iPads that really took me down because it's an iOS. And it doesn't have a Mac operating system. And my name is, my, my title is Macintosh. So I was always like, I can't touch those. I, I don't have time to figure those out. And at one point I was, I was told to ask to work for a lunch, to, to a lunch to do something. And I'm just like, this is, no. You know, so... Uh, so with those iPads and that, once the surfaces started coming out and we started getting other tablets from other companies, then we could go, who's doing those? And this guy's like, I'm taking on tablets. And I went, here you go, baby. Take the iPads. <laughs> and and so, so, you know, that just really helped. So when someone comes to me and goes, I need help setting up my uh, mail on my phone, I just go, I'm not the expert in that. I'm... You know, but, but I can direct you to the person who does. 
contact the help desk, make sure they assign the ticket to Bilbo, you know, whoever it is, and, 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 and I, I, I can point them. So they were coming to me and asking me because, because I know where to go, just the way I go to people and ask, but at least I can get that away from me without being, w w without being rude about it. Right. So. How large is your school? How large is my school? Um, it's a, yeah, small questions I can repeat. Uh, it's a, uh, oh, I should have brought those numbers. It's pretty big. It's really big. So there's a University of Michigan, there's Eastern Michigan, and then we're right in the middle. And we got a lot of technical programs in it, but it, it's, it's a very large community college. Um, it's like the, the, the Mac stuff, went, like all those labs I went through, those are all the programs that are just using just Mac, and that's a very small percentage to what we have going on mm -hmm. on the rest of it. So, but but I, since I started in the 90s doing this, I grew with it. So it's it's you know it doesn't look as bad as it does now. So, anybody else? So so my question to you is, um, all of you, do you take on like stuff like? Um, like 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 setting up the the, the web servers for for things because a lot of tools like Monkey and Reposado and Jam, all this stuff takes a lot of work to set up. I think that's the thing that scared me the most about going switching over to this stuff was, it's no longer just here's a GUI tool that sits on my desktop and I can run it off my machine like a remote desktop. I mean like when I was doing my Flash updates, I would just select every machine in my labs and then just run a Flash update job. And it worked great, but it's, it seemed really, it's, it was a ridiculous amount of work to do. And, uh, but the back end stuff is the stuff that just really, um, really threw me. And it's always really surprises me when I find people are like, oh no, I'm setting up Unix uh, virtual servers and I'm taking care of Mac management and that, and for you people, I applaud you, so. Oh, and, and those four agreement stuff, y you can Google that. There's there's books on it and things like that. It's it, it's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. I just touched on it. So I guess we're done then. All right. Well, th thank you for your time, and thank you for your patience.